Greetings and salutations. This is Kung Pao. Enter the minute, minute five. Opening frame. A slightly more blurry Master Pain as he is about to attack the Chosen One with his katana. As the katana comes rushing down towards the bed, the Chosen One's feet quickly dive in, narrowly avoiding the blade. From out of nowhere, the Chosen One leaps onto a nearby table, turning around to face his attacker. Master Pain swings at the Chosen One, who jumps to avoid the blade, and each time Master Pain takes a lunge, he jumps around, mockingly. Angrily, Master Pain takes yet another swipe at the Chosen One, but he only manages to cut his diaper. The Chosen One then proceeds to cheekily urinate on Master Pain's face. Humiliated, Master Pain takes one last stab at the Chosen One, embedding the blade into the wall behind him, and thus allowing the Chosen One to walk across the blade to kick Master Pain some more times in the face. The Chosen One jumps off and immediately hides in the shadows. As he is looking around the empty shack, Master Pain comes up with a dastardly idea. So much so, we get an extreme close-up of the mustache. Flash cut to Master Pain outside the shack, apparently barring the doors with some logs before we cut to him setting a torch on fire before throwing it on a pile of straw to set alight the entire shack. We cut to Master Pain, slow motion walking away, knowing his opponent will surely perish in the flames. But what happened to the Chosen One? Will he survive? Will he be burnt to a crisp? Never fear, because as a window explodes, a little bunch wrapped in cloth is flung clear from the shack, revealing the Chosen One. And on the closing frame, we see the Chosen One in a mid-flash to white. So, <laughs> yeah, of course, you know, they're not going to kill the protagonist in the first five minutes of the movie. I mean, it, again, it's, it's a bold movie. It, re it really is. It would be very Monty Python of it uh, if they did it that. I'm fairly certain I actually written down something about Monty Python, but obviously it did not make it in. I, uh, I should have said something about that in the uh, previous bit about absurdism. I didn't say it, therefore it did not exist. And that is reality, ladies and gentlemen. But I don't want to talk about absurdism. I want to talk about anachronism. Yes! What is anachronism? It's basically something being out of place, usually with an, in reference to like a time period. So this is where my life got a little bit crazy as I was researching this minute. The lighter, the butane lighter. Uh, it's it's clearly an anachronism. It's clearly a, a joke. I, yeah, it has to be, right? I mean, they didn't have those kind of lighters this time period. Yeah, sure. That, that has that has to be that has to be that has to be real. That ha that can't be real. That can't be real. Can it? Can it? Am, am I am I the one that gets this joke? I mean, really, am I the only one that gets this joke? Am I the only one that thinks this is funny? So here's the thing: the movie has no context of the time period. We see it's not modern day China. In fact, there is no true indication of geography, let alone age, century, day, time, month, you know, whatever. This has to be false. This has to be a fake thing. This can't, this butane lighter can't exist. Diegetically speaking, we have no idea what the time is, but of course the family's in a shack, which their clothing isn't modern. This indicates something in the past. Uh, some of Master Pain's accoutrements are, look a little bit modernistic, like the gaunts and stuff like that, but on the whole, this doesn't scream anything within the last, let's just say, 100 years. So, we go to Jimmy Wang Yu's Tiger and Crane Fist, and we find out that it's set during the Second Sino-Japanese War. That's the original movie. The original movie is about two opposing martial arts schools, the Tiger and the Crane schools, and how they have to bandy together to fight the, to quote Wikipedia, Japanese occupational forces. So the Sino-Japanese War was a war fought during, just before World War II and up to the end of World War II. So 1937 to 1945. It was China versus Japan. And in fact, Master Pain in the original movie was part of the Japanese forces. We now have a date. So the chosen one is a baby. So if we do maths, we can work backwards. Where we have no idea what time during that eight year period. So we're just gonna go to the lower end. Jimmy Wang Yu was 33 when he filmed the movie. If we take that year off, we are actually at the turn of the century. So that's roughly, it'll say 1905. I, I am making this up as I go along. Because we go to Odekirk, and during the time of release of Kung Pao, he was roughly in his mid 
30s, pushing closer to 40 by the time I think the movie was released. So that would mean turn of the century China. So here we go. Lighters. Lighters did exist pretty much back then. And I was like, ah oh, shit, is this a real thing? Holy crap, this could not be a joke. So let's look at the lighter itself. Lighters have been around since the turn of the 20th century. In fact, in a small amount of research, they actually date to about mid 19th century. However, butane as a fuel source was definitely not used until 1930s. So where does that place us? Well, it does kind of mean that this lighter could exist within the era the movie is predominantly set, the 1930s. So, oh crap. Maybe this joke that I thought was a joke wasn't a joke. My entire worldview was blown. Except there's one thing. The lighters at the time were what we probably think of as a Zippo. It's a igniter with a flint. So even though there was a fuel sense before butane, the one we see on the screen is it's a gas propelled lighter. And it's also, I'm probably gonna get this pronounced way badly, a piezoelectric spark. Meaning when they push the button down, that creates a spark which ignites the butane. They didn't exist in the 1950s. So either this is an intentional joke or someone fucked up. I'm gonna go with joke. It's a comedy show and we do see a further anachronism. In fact, we see probably several further anachronisms throughout this movie. So yeah, I was I wanted to talk about an anachronism and I thought, oh shit, let me just double check this is an anachronism. And it turns out, well, yes it is, but it was a nice journey and I thought I'd at least uh, take you all with me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it filled up some time in an episode and it amused me. <laughs> so I'm going to finally, um, I'm not sure I want to do this anymore because I'm really happy with this, but I, this is a big bug for my personal cinematography tastes, but I, I'm going to leave it on this particular thing. So we get the shot of Master Payne walking away. It's the classic badass shot. It predates some of the, the Monday James Bond stuff, but it's still a great shot. Cinematography, it is brilliant. So you've got the antagonist in the foreground in silhouette, walking away into darkness. In the background, you have the burning building casting all this light. What I like about this shot is also there's some practical light here, uh, practical flames, but you don't notice there's actually some animated flames on top. This was shot in the studio, so they probably had flame bars and they just enhanced them in-house. I don't know, I've not seen the original uh, tracking effect shots. The lighting works for this character scene. The cast light from the burning building in, in the nighttime just, remember what I was saying about uh, contrast? This actually does amp up that contrast. The blacks and more blacker, the whites are more whiter. The antagonist's face is hidden in darkness. This is brilliant storytelling through the lighting alone. I like lighting in cinematography. If I was never going to be a director or a writer or a producer or I'll never be an actor. If I could, were barred from any other one of those jobs in Hollywood, I'd love to be a lighting technician. Lighting is fun. I love, I love moving around lights. I like setting up lights in the few films I've been involved in. It's it's a fun thing and it really, the usage of light is really great and the how light casts, particularly when it comes to casting on the human face, adds so much to a scene. And this is why, well, one of multiple reasons of why I can't stand, yes, some of you probably know I'm gonna say it, Batman versus Superman. There's this one shot. Given the context clues that I've just talked about, there's this one shot that I can't freaking stand. It's in the climatic, part of the movie. The heroes have regrouped to take on Doomsday. There's fire literally all around them and the heroes are in shot and the three heroes with literally light all around. There's flames everywhere and the three heroes look like mud. They are grey. There's no contrast. Their features are muted. You have a hero shot. There's flames all around them. That also means there's side lights and yet, okay, so this was shot in the green screen. They could add these lights to shoot in the green screen, but they didn't. They didn't add any lights to these characters. They didn't even post enhance anything. So you don't get to see the characters' faces. That is a big deal in a movie, especially in this big, dramatic, climatic moments of the film. We do not get to see their faces properly. And it's all mud. And this is when you go, wow, these guys literally did not know how to shoot a good frame of footage in this movie. There's light everywhere in a, what would have been a magnificent shot and they completely botched it. Let's get back onto the fun and happy audio commentary. Audio commentary. So Paul Marshall at the beginning of the audio commentary segment starts explaining some of the process. We put the old footage into a blender and came up with something entirely new and it was, uh, we were all, we were in pre-production, we were in post-production during pre-production for what, six months? 
probably before we actually went out. Yeah, this 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 film was an absolute <laughs> puzzle to make such a very clear and blatant freak show. Uh, it was <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge technical uh, achievement. Actually. I like the clear and blatant freak freak show. <laughs> yeah. I will treasure that always. I, I I do like Steve's comment about the freak show. <laughs> It's it's so apt. And unfortunately, there is absolutely no dialogue in this particular scene. It's all action. So therefore, we have neither the what are they really saying track, and we don't have an audiobook track. I mean, that was kind of my point when I started talking about the audiobook, is that it's not descriptive, so it's not really an audiobook. And therefore, if it's just saying dialogue in a posh voice, it's just saying dialogue in a posh voice. And there's no dialogue, there's no posh voice, so what can I do for you? All that being said, thank you very much for listening. Please like, share, subscribe, do all the usual stuff. I have a Facebook page. I have both uh, a page dedicated for this podcast at facebook.com slash Kung Pao Minute, or one word, and also Fanboy Crossing could be found there. Please check out the YouTube video, Fanboy Crossing. I'm posting this to this account and SoundCloud. I have a coffee account. Please, if you want to shoot me a one-time donation. I also have Patreon set up now, and for as little as a buck, you can get early access, as well as other tiers, so you can get your name in the end of the credits. Probably scrolling up now. If there's only one name, it's going to take a long time, because as much as I waffle in these end bits, that's just going to take a long time. It's getting even slower now, because I'm waffling. But if you also want to have your name shouted out at the end of this as well, there's a tier for that. And as I threatened in the previous podcast, I might do it in a silly voice. Let me know if you want it in a silly voice or not. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm still early days in this. And so far, I'm having fun recording this. And I'm five episodes in. I've, I'm finding new and invented things to talk about this great movie that I love. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's get through the first month. Yeah, I'll get ready for the content. Let's get some guests in. Probably have to get through the boring chapter bit first. <laughs> Either way... Uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself and I'll see you next time. See ya.